everyone. Somebody asked in a Facebook group that I'm in how to set up a publishing company if you are a self-published or indie author. And a friend of mine, an author friend, Lisa Lewison, I'll link her below, she uh, kindly tagged me and said, Emma's got a video on this, and I have. <laughs> but when I went back and looked for it so that I could share the link, um, I had a quick watch through some of the content, skip through it, and it doesn't include all of the things that I would like to talk about. And also, in that video, I am speaking so <laughs> fast. I know I talk quickly, but this video is too much. So I thought I would make a slower video, updated with a bit more in-depth content. So, here we are. In this video, I want to talk about coming up with a name and a logo, your different options for the type of company that you can have, or the type of business you can have. And along the way, I'll mention a few kind of admin useful points. Now, of course, I am not a business or a legal expert. My degrees are in marine biology and education. I am in no way an expert on this stuff. I simply have a business and I've run it for five years. And when I set it up, I did lots of research about what to do. So yeah, just a, a, a disclaimer, <laughs> I'm not an expert. Always check all of the um, details of, of these things when you are making your decisions. Um, also, I am a UK business owner, so things will vary in other countries. They are typically fairly similar, um, but if you're in other territories, do have a check. So I wanted to start by saying, as a self-published, <coughs> excuse me, or indie author, you are automatically a business owner. You have created some intellectual property and you are selling it. You have a business. So the point is really to decide what you want that to look like. And it will depend. Everyone will make different decisions about how that will look, depending on what kinds of books, I guess, you're publishing, how many books you're publishing, how you see the future, what your own experience and capabilities and, and all of those things are. And also, you can always change things. It can feel really scary that you're doing this thing and that's it forever. It, it doesn't have to be forever. You can even change the name of your company. You Things can change if you made the wrong decision. So do the best as always with the experience and knowledge that you have. Um, so to start off with, yes, come up with a name. So I think this is really fun and you could talk to other people for their ideas and um, you know bounce your ideas off of, off of your friends. Um, personally, my publishing company is Sartain Publishing Limited. So the reason that I use that name is the word Sartain is not in fact a word, it's my maiden name. So for me, I didn't want a word that meant something because I knew I probably wanted to write in different genres and for different ages. So I didn't want something that marked me out as a children's author or a non-fiction author or an author that talks about certain subjects. I wanted something that didn't really mean anything. <clears throat> Although I do like that the word, the name Sartain sounds a little bit like certain. So it makes me sound like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> um, anyway, it also was a really nice way for me to bring the name I grew up with into my writing because I write with my married name. So it just felt like the right thing to do for me. Now you might come up with something, as I say, that kind of demonstrates what you are writing about in some way. So if you're writing, I mean, for instance, I write books about the sea, so I could call myself marine publishers or, or something. Um, so come up with something that characterises what you do for you. I would think carefully if you're thinking about using your name. So if I was going to call my company Emma Rosen Publishing or Emma Rosen Books, which actually I trade under, um, because if that's in, let's say, Amazon under publisher, um, it can show the customers that you are self-published. And often as self-published or indie authors, we are emulating the traditional publishing companies. Um, and there is a stigma. It, it is going, but there is a stigma around self-publishing. And so by using your own name, it makes it abundantly clear that that is what you're doing. And so for me, it wasn't the right option for me. Some people do do that. And that's absolutely, you know, <laughs> if that's what they want to do, then fantastic. But just think about the implications and whether you're comfortable with that or not. Um, 
and it's going to be different for everybody. Some people might go with a name like I have done and there are publishing companies such as Simon & Schuster and I assume Walker Books is a surname, it might not be, um, where they use names so that's quite a traditional thing to do or some publishing companies like Penguin, it's a, a, a random thing. Random House is supposedly called that because um, it's very random as to what books do well. <laughs> so there was a the recent uh, court case uh, that they said that. Um, so come up with something that works for you, but just think carefully if you're going to use your own name that's the same as your pen name. So that name then is what you're going to use if you buy your own ISBNs. And what that means is that you then have that tie up through everything that when your book is published, the publisher will say that name that you have come up with. So when you buy them, give that company name and be ready. I'll link below a video about ISBNs if you're not sure. Um, but make sure you use the company name and not your personal name so that that's going to come up under publisher. Um, and then you get to come up with a logo. So you can design this yourself. You can get a friend to do it. There are logo designers out there. I asked a friend to do it because I just wanted something really simple and he had the skills and the programs to do it. You can use all sorts of programs, but ideally what you want is a file that is vectored. So mine are saved as AI or Illustrator files. You could also have PSD or Photoshop files. What that means is when you're building your, your files or your book designer is building your files, um, that image should be nice and crisp. Whereas if you're using a picture file, so like a JPEG or a PNG, it's not quite so crisp. So it just, again, is professional. Um, so there are ways around it if you have a PNG or a JPEG file to sharpen it up. But ideally that's the file formats I would say that you would like to have. Um, it's always good to have lots of formats for all the different things. So that logo is then probably going to be used on the back of your book, uh, on the half title page and on the spine. I personally have two versions of my logo. Well, a few because I have it in different colours, but two main versions because I have um, so my logo is just SP with Sartain Publishing under it, but on a children's book where that's super tiny on a three millimeter spine, you can't read the Sartain Publishing. It looks like a blob of nothing. So I just have the SP um, as a simple logo on those. So anyway, I think it's kind of fun to come up with a name and a logo. And when you're all ready with that and you're happy, then you can think about what kind of business you would like to run. So the simplest kind of business is a sole trader in the UK. In the US, it's called a, a sole proprietor, I believe. Um, and there'll be similar things in other countries, but they'll all have their nuances about how they're run. So do always check. Now, as a sole trader, you haven't got to register that company. You just decide you have a sole trader business. You need to keep your accounts separate from your personal finances. So have a business account or a, um, a you could use a personal account that has no other transactions, but keep it separate. Keep a spreadsheet of all of the ins and outs of your business. And then you, um, when you are taking the income from that company, you need to file a, a self-assessment showing how much income you had for tax purposes. So really it's the most straightforward in terms of paperwork. Um, and if you decide later that you want to do something else, then you can, you can always change the kind of business, but it's just the easiest one to do. It's gonna probably suit you best if you were only planning to produce one book. It just keeps it very simple. Or if the paperwork accounting side of things is, is too much for a limited company. The thing to be slightly wary of with a sole trader is that um, your name is not protected unless you trademark it um, and your logo the same, but that's the case for any logo. Um, I'll explain in a moment about names with limited companies, but basically if you were called Plant Pot Books, <laughs> I'm looking at a Plant Pot, <laughs> why would you call your company that? If you were Plant Pot Books, uh, another company could also be Plant Pot Books and there's nothing you can do about that. Any company could be called that. Um, so it just doesn't 
quite have the same level of protection. Also, in terms of tax, in the UK at least, you pay um, in the same way as for income tax via your self-assessment. So sometimes, depending on the amount of money that you're making and the way that you are paying yourself, it can be favourable for tax reasons to run a limited company. Um, but there are other financial implications and admin implications to that. So sole trader, probably the easiest one. You can be a partnership if you're working with someone else, maybe you and an illustrator or a co-writer setting this up together. And if that's the case, one of you registers to be the paperwork person. Um, but it's, it's really simple, again, along similar lines to a sole trader. So the other main kind of business that you might be considering is a private limited company or LTD. I think it's unlikely that you'll be setting up a PLC and floating uh, shares on the stock market. So we'll just put PLCs over there. Um, a private limited company, the point is to separate your liabilities as a, as a person from the company. So um, if somebody sued you, it limits the liability um, of you as a person and that would be directed at the company rather than you, if that makes sense. So it's a little more protective of your finances, um, of sort of the legal side of things as well. So that might be appealing to you. We all hope that we're not going to have legal action taken against us or any of that stuff, but it, it would protect you if that did unfortunately happen at some point. It also gives some protection over your name. So there cannot be another limited company with your name. It has to be original. So that name you came up with at the beginning, you will have to check that there, and, and it won't let you register it if it's the same as somebody else. So it has to be original. It doesn't give you total protection unless you trademark your name. Um, I'll talk about that in a different video, but it does give you that certain element that somebody cannot set up another limited company with the same name, which I think is also appealing. Now, there is a lot more paperwork and admin considerations. Um, it's a lot more complicated, and I'll run through those in a nutshell, because although we have those positives of the legal protection, the, uh, the original name, also, depending on your income, it can be favourable for tax purposes. I would look up all of the different finances because it very much depends on your level of income, whether it's better to be a sole trader or a limited company, because it depends on whether you're paid through dividends or a salary or both and at what level. Um, so have a look into it, but it can be favourable. It used to be much more favourable, but the the tax things have changed in various budgets and now it's it's a very much it depends situation. So if you've decided that you want to set up a limited company, you have to register your company with Companies House. And on Companies House, it will have your name, they'll give you a company number, and it will also have the address of the company. So anyone can go, it's a public register, and look up the name of your business. It will also have the list of any directors, whether that's just you or there are other people as well, and their director address. So you may be uneasy about sharing your residential address and there are ways around that. So what you can do is if there is um, another business that are comfortable with you using their address and you must have their permission, you can use their address as your registered company address and so therefore it, it their premises is your <laughs> is your address um, and you know that that hides your your residential address that you don't want on the public record another option is to pay what's known as a brass plate company um, colloquially um, for a registered address so if you look up registered company address or registered um, director address you will find these businesses and you pay to be allowed to use their address now, with that, they generally will forward you anything from HMRC or Companies House, any post. Um, you may have to pay extra to get any other post that goes to them. <clears throat> um, and there are various arrangements depending on if you want to use any of their in-person facilities. As I say, post forwarding, all of that stuff. So look at what they offer. Um, I've done both of these things in the past. I've used a brass plate company. I've used another business. Um, 
so it depends but i don't want my residential address on the on the public record you might not care and that's totally fine there are lots of people who have uh, a limited company and the address is their personal address so it's up to you and what you feel comfortable with but it is public record um, the <clears throat> sorry the business address and the director address and that director address does not have to be your residential address it is just an address that you can be found at so that can be the same as the company address um, so that's something to bear in mind the whole thing around your address being public and maybe having to um, hide that uh, because most of us do not have an office this is my office but it is in my house um, so something to consider um, in terms of paperwork every single year you have to file a confirmation statement it costs 13 pounds right now it's just a bit of paperwork where you say yes everything's the same my address is the same the same people are here same number of employees i'm still doing the same thing and you pay 13 pounds every year and you have to remember to do it so there's that you also have to file company accounts and it is complicated complicated and it makes me crazy i am getting better at it you can obviously pay an accountant when you're thinking about all of these things that might be part of the the cost decisions that you need to factor in often accountants pay for themselves in the savings that they make for you if that paperwork seems way too complicated an accountant would be worth their weight in gold um, so think about it you may want to use an accountant um, if well for either kind of business to be fair but uh, submitting company accounts is complicated so you might want to have <laughs> um, an accountant to do that for you um, and that has to be done yearly um, you obviously again have to keep all of the accounts separate in a business account or a separate bank account and then you need to pay yourself either via dividends and any other directors via dividends and um, salary should you so wish and then as an individual you will file a self-assessment tax return um, for the income that you have received from the company so you're doing company accounts confirmation statement self-assessment um paying your corporation tax <laughs> um all of those kind of extra bits of paperwork you may have to have help with that because it's complicated you might want an accountant so factor in all of that level of complexity along with the benefits that a limited company can bring so that's kind of an overview decide whether you want a sole trader simple business um much more easy to handle on your own it might be that you're only producing one book so sole trade is totally fine or are you thinking about big income and big dreams or you just want the protection that a limited company provides and you can handle the paperwork maybe set up a limited company or start as a sole trader and change to a limited company um so lots to think about um when you are setting up your business it, it can be really overwhelming there's loads of information out there the website of hmrc and companies house and they have lots of information there's a lot of jargon um and it can be really hard if you're new to this um but there is a lot of kind of, there's a lot of uh, blogs and things like that that can help you out so think about what suits you best but it can always change if you realize down the line that that wasn't quite what you wanted to do so i hope that that was helpful it's just an overview really of everything that you need to think about some of these things might change as i say i'm not an expert um but <laughs> you now run a business so um you need to have a think about what that looks like for you i hope that was helpful if it was please hit like don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this one and I'll see you all soon. Take care.